Emil Ambos' father is Peter Ambos. He's actually originally from Germany, but he moved to America uh, starting in Norfolk, Virginia, where he had a confectionery. He ended up moving to Columbus and set up another confectionery. Peter Ambos was successful in his business and then had another success when he managed to land Dorothea Yeager as his wife. Dorothea was one of the daughters of Christian Frederick Yeager, one of the pioneers of the German community in Columbus. Emil was born in 1844 in Columbus, and eventually Emil went into the liquor business. With all this money that's coming in from the liquor business, he decides to buy this property out by Alum Creek, and it's by these little lakes, what would be modern day Livingston Avenue and College Avenue, uh, right near where Berwick is today. This property, we always hear stories about in Columbus, but we've never had really great photographs. I had seen maybe one drawing of it at one time, and when we found this collection, it was a huge find for Columbus history and particularly people of the East Side and Berwick. This is a property that is a pleasure ground. People go out there on beautiful, warm, sunny days. They sit by the water, they have a lovely picnic, they get in their rowboats, and they go out on the lake. He stocked these two lakes very well with all sorts of fish. He builds a dam with a bridge across the top. You can see below it kind of falls down into a waterfall. And he also builds mesh screens along the edge of the lake where it drops down into Alum Creek. So he had this really well-stocked lake and he wanted to keep them there for his own purposes. He builds walking bridges. He builds a water fountain. He has a water tower. He has the windmill. Um, he has stables for his horses and he builds um, many different cabins and from my understanding a residence as well. We have an image that shows a few individuals sitting on this mounded island in the lake and when you zoom in on that one we realized that behind this man's head you can see some antlers. We did a little bit more research and came to find that Emil Ambos used to allow the Elks to host their annual clam bake at his estate you can also importantly see his small-scale paddle boat and that image was crucial to our research because that's the one that actually has his nickname written across the top and that allowed Aaron to positively identify this property, these photographs. At the very top here it says Uncle A.M.E. I didn't know what that meant and I started doing some research and I ended up finding a reference to this boat on the Columbus Dispatch database that we have, and that was Emil Ambos's nickname, Uncle M. And then when we started doing more research, we realized that the people in the photographs were Edmund Aris and his wife Elizabeth, and they are uh, relations to the Jaegers who married into the Ambos family. So Edmund Aris is Emil Ambos's second cousin. So that's how we kind of pieced everything together and we realized who the people were in the photographs. This would be the Aris and Jaeger family. Edmund is actually very young in this picture, so we're, we're able to date it in the late um, 1880s. We think he's about 12 in that photo. And we believe one of these men is Emil at a younger age. Emil did live quite an opulent lifestyle. He was known for his wide array of fashions. He was said to wear a different attire each day of the week to ride his horse and ride, in fact, a different horse each day of the week. He was actually really well known as sort of a philanthropist, particularly to orphans. He's always mentioned in the dispatches giving food and clothing to kids, particularly um, African-American children. He's always throwing parties for them, especially during Christmas. He also has many servants or bodyguards. One in particular was Albert Carr. And from a young age, he was with Ambos and was one of his servants. Emil passes away in 1898. Emil's about 53 years old when he passes away, so really young. Not surprising, he dies of liver disease, a dealer in spirits. His will is very long and detailed, 17 pages long on legal sheets. It did take a long time for them to figure out too because it was so long and so detailed and all these people are wanting money. He spells it out, who's gonna get his horses, who's gonna get his money. Emil Ambos leaves $500 to everyone who has worked for him. He does not itemize a list of these people. He also leaves $1,000 to Albert Carr because he's such a valued friend, but he does not articulate that Albert Carr works for him and should therefore also be privy to that additional $500. So Albert Carr 
is granted $1,000 as stated in the will. He sues for the $500 and then in the end they settle for $250. But it's actually Edmund Aris's father, John D. Aris, who represents Albert Carr to help him secure that financial settlement. He's very close with the family in so much that Edmund Aris and, and his wife Elizabeth sort of take him in as a child. And there's even a picture of him on the Aris's mantle right above their fireplace. Most important for the city of Columbus is that he bequeaths part of his property out in Berwick to the city. So out of that 116 acres, he's decided to leave 30 odd acres to the city in perpetuity to be operated as a park known as Ambos Park. And it's something that everyone, it seems, for the most part, quite enthusiastic about. But things get a little complicated, as they often do. The city councilmen take trips out to the property. <laughs> One day they love it, they think it's beautiful, there's plenty of shade, it's gonna be this fabulous addition to the city. And then the next day they change their mind and decide, no, no, it's too far out. More likely, the real reasoning behind it is that Emil Ambos stated in his will the exact individuals he wanted involved in operating the park for their lifetime. They're not even sure if that's even legal to have people looking over the park for a lifetime. Lawyers were, were arguing about whether that can even be possibly done. So what they decide to figure out if they're gonna accept the, the property or not is they, they have a seance. There's a, a city councilman who's a spiritualist and he brings in a medium and they want to rise Emil Ambos from the dead <laughs> um, and have them speak to them about what he wants to be done with the property. And ultimately they Say they contact Emil Ambos from the grave, and he says to them, you know, I've changed my mind. I was gonna give it to you, but now I think you're all short skates and I don't wanna give it to you anyway. With that, according to the papers, they rule not to take the property seven against it and five for it. It's quite interesting that the council member who initiated the seance was one of those in favor of the park. And he really wanted to contact Emil Ambos to seal the deal when unfortunately it backfired on him. Ultimately, it becomes Shady Lane Nursery, and they're a large nursery on the east side, dealing mostly through the early 1910s, 1920s. They ultimately decide to um, sell it to make a golf course. After the golf course, the property was redeveloped as a housing development. Now, there are some lovely houses there, but back up Lakeside. Another major stipulation of the will is that he has a life-size sculpture of him uh, put at his grave in Greenlawn. So he's now in Greenlawn with his fisherman hat on, his pole, and those fish. And they said at any time during the day, you could say at 2 o'clock in the morning, hey, Emil, do you want to go fishing? He would get up, take his fishing rod, and he would go out and fish.